What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and uh, some of you guys ask me that uh, can you duplicate primary keys in relational databases even uh, in a case where you have concurrent web application in the same exact millisecond writing the same exact primary key what will happen and the short answer is obviously it's impossible but obviously how about we actually prove it here i have a postgres database running on my local docker container here and i'm simulating two clients here this is one terminal at the, its own TCP connection to the database and that's another complete different terminal. Think of them as different users. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, um, a table called create table test and let's have a primary key here integer primary key right and then just like that if I do select star from test here on the other end I have a table obviously and if I do select star store from test that the table is immediately invisible the table is immediately visible on all transactions right on all connections not transactions i don't have any transactions here so let's clear up the pages here and here's what we're gonna do if i am i'm not gonna uh, start a transaction i'm inserting a row insert into test values one that means insert the primary key value of one and that immediately succeeds if I do select star from test here not form I get ID 1 if I do select star from test I get ID 1 it's immediately visible correct so far so good if I try to insert on the other transaction insert into test values 1 I'm gonna get an error duplicate key value right that makes sense right because that key already in uh, index and it's a already unique index so you can't really duplicate it can you but here's what we're gonna do i'm gonna begin a transaction here okay and i'm also gonna begin a transaction on this side and i'm gonna insert into test values value number two and if we know transactions and isolations guys which i talked about in the asset value go ahead and check it out that means if I do select star from test here I'm gonna see number two because it's in my own transaction however if I do select star from test here I'm not gonna see it and the reason is because it's not really committed right and this transaction has an isolation level default I think read committed that means it will only read committed stuff I believe if that was that otherwise if this star read is seeing that change that means it's a dirty read because this thing did not commit it yet so if i do a commit here or should i commit the transaction now if i select it here i start seeing that in my transaction and i for example i just now commit although i didn't really do any changes in my transaction but don't have to right all right so let's spice things up guys a little bit i'm gonna begin transaction on this side i'm gonna begin transaction on this side i'm going to insert a value of three i'm not gonna commit but here if i do select star from test obviously there is two but three doesn't doesn't exist if i do here three does exist right because i it's on in my own isolation right it's, in, it's my own transaction so i can see it here's what i'm gonna do here i'm going to insert into test values three so simulating concurrent writes right the same value what do you think will happen technically to this transaction three doesn't exist so that should succeed however look what postgres did it just froze my transaction i am completely blocked here right and that's called I don't know that what the exact implementation of the Postgres is doing here, but it could be either a row level lock, right? It locks level uh, the the row number three, okay, from actually being inserted again or doing anything out of it, because that's what we're doing, right? And uh, or it could be just a serialization kind of uh, isolation level, right? 
But look at what, what happened here. That's very interesting. So that will remain like that until some sort of a timeout will hit, right? Or uh, either this transaction rolls back. If I roll back, and we're going to do two things here. I'm going to show a case where this is going to commit, right? And what, what do you guys think? If I committed here, that transaction will automatically unblock. And can you guess what will happen? Yes, it will throw an error. So the moment I commit, that will unblock and that insert statement will go to the table trying to actually insert, but we'll get that error again. Because now in this case, if, if I do select star from uh, test, obviously my transaction is now all bad, right? So if I do roll back and because it failed, right? So I can still see it, three, because it committed. So let's spice things up, guys. One last thing before we end the video. So if I do begin transaction here, begin transaction here, and I'm going to insert value four. How about that? And here, I am going to insert into test value number five. That shouldn't be blocked because nobody's actually inserting five. So that succeeds, right? However, now I'm going to come here and I'm going to start inserting value number five. Look what happened. I'm stuck. This transaction is stuck now, right? But here's what I'm going to do. I am going to roll back this one. The moment I roll back this transaction, what will happen to this transaction? You guessed it. It will actually work. It will insert successfully. And now, if I do select star from uh, test, you can see the number five value, right? And I can either comment here or roll back. All right, guys, that was a quick video showing you that uh, even isolation levels, especially in transaction databases, are very, very critical and very, very powerful, right? This is something that... Uh, NoSQL databases actually lack. They don't have these powerful features like uh, setting different isolation levels. And I just showed you the read committed isolation uh, level, right? I can show you in another video, and I really recommend you watching my asset video uh, to learn more about these four properties. But uh, I'm going to make another video talking about how to begin a transaction because in trans in, in uh, in Postgres, you can actually begin a transaction, right? Uh, isolation level read committed. You can actually do this, right? Or also begin a transaction and a re repeatable, repeatable read isolation level, and you can do that. And then you can dif do different things, and all of these things mean different things. And I, I, I rather make them uh, in another video, leave them to another video for more, more juicy details. Uh, like this video if you like it, guys. Dislike it if you did not like it, and uh, share it with your friend. Can you see you on the next one? You guys stay awesome and uh, keep asking me these great questions. Love them.